Hey Data Factory friends. Today we're going to talk about how to trigger a pipeline in a separate factory by utilizing the built-in web activity of Azure Data Factory. For those of you that don't know, almost everything that you could do in the Data Factory user experience is also available via a REST API reference. Today we're going to use the pipeline's create run REST API call to trigger a pipeline in a separate factory. Now, for most cases, especially within your own factory, you can use the execute pipeline activity to trigger different pipelines from within a pipeline itself. But the two cases where you may want to use this web activity is one, when you're trying to call a pipeline in a separate factory, or if you want to custom parameterize your pipeline that you're calling. So what we're doing here is we're gonna call a URL endpoint of a web activity. And the URL is just a string that includes essentially subscription name, resource group, but also the pipeline name that we're gonna call. So using the existing pipeline parameterization model, you actually could add dynamic content here and customize which pipeline you're running. Now I'm gonna have two examples here. The first is going to be calling a pipeline without parameters, and the second is going to be calling a pipeline with parameters. So I'm in a factory called Dataflow Demos right now, and I'm going to trigger two pipelines in a separate factory called Dapperlov CICD Prod. These factories are actually in different subscriptions. So the first pipeline that I'm going to trigger is a parameterized wait activity, which takes in a parameter wait time and passes that into the wait activity settings and we'll just wait for that amount. The second is, um, and if you've seen some of my previous examples, a mapping data flow, which takes um, beer reviews and tries to aggregate the top beers by state. Now, what actually happens in these pipelines is not important for this demo, so I'm not going to dive too deep. I just want to simply show that these are published pipelines in a separate factory. Now, published is key because the only way the data factory REST service can reach a pipeline if it gets published to that pipeline level. So if you're either in just a Git feature branch or debugging and you try to trigger a pipeline, it's not going to work. Now, calling a pipeline with a web API is the same thing essentially as going into that factory itself and clicking trigger now. So let's see how this works. So I have a URL, which is, you could go to our Rust API documentation, and it more or less is just the path to the pipeline itself with create run at the end, and then the API version, which should be, I believe, 06.01.2018, which is just the GA API version of Azure Data Factory. Now, as it says in our REST API documentation, this is a post activity. So right here. And the only thing we're passing in the body is parameters if you have them. So one pipeline does not, so it just has an empty body. The other one does, so it's passing the parameter there. And then I'm using MSI authentication to connect to that separate factory. So that's something important. To be able to trigger a pipeline via web activity, the factory with the web activity is going to need permissions on the factory with the pipeline, even if it's the same factory. So if I go into the Azure portal here, you could see that my uh, application Dataflow demos on CICD prod is actually a data factory contributor. So I'm able to have enough permissions to actually create the runs itself. Um, if you have any questions on permissions, feel free to put them in the comments, but there's essentially one specific permission, which is pipelines actions, which allows you to do a post call on pipelines. So let's just do a quick debug run to see what happens here. So another thing to keep in mind as this is running, the web activity works on a fire and forget model. So as you're calling pipelines in, some, in a separate factory, the web activity is not going to wait for the pipeline to complete. It's just going to verify it as permissions to actually successfully do the API call, and then it's going to return success. So this is just take a few seconds. So we have one that took 13, one that took four seconds. 
Um, we can see the output. Okay, great. This is just what's returned from the uh, response of the web call. Now let's go here. Let's go back into the factory with these pipelines and let's go into the monitoring screen. So right now it says filter by success. Let's make sure just look at everything that's in progress. And here we could see, so my parameter example actually already succeeded, whereas my rank beers is a bit longer. It's a mapping data flow, so it'll take a few minutes to spin up the Spark cluster. But um, something to keep in mind is that the web activity succeeded in the other one and that pipeline is done. So looking at this parameter example, we could see, oh great, the input parameters were successful. The wait time in seconds was four for this web activity. And that's expected because that is what we have the body here. That's pretty much it. Again, this is pretty extensible and customizable. So you could do a lot of really cool things with how you're actually calling pipelines this way. Um, but yeah, feel free to put any comments in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them after this video. Hopefully this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions.